So what does Led Zeppelin have to do with the books I read? Let's find out. Hey everyone, welcome back to the next chapter. My name is Christopher Navo and I'm going to be your host. If this is your first time joining, thank you for stopping by. Let me know what you think of the content. Uh, today's video is about my first booktube book tag. And uh, this, the theme here is Led Zeppelin. And how this works is uh, there are nine prompts uh, asking a question about a book, author, or series I've read based on the nine uh, cover songs from Led Zeppelin's very first album. Uh, and uh, this was originally started by Jake from the uh, Bookish Drummer um, and then passed on to a couple other book tours where it came into uh, Pat from Pat's Mythos. And Pat tagged me uh, to uh, uh, try to do this video. So um, I thought, yeah, let's do this. Sounds fun. So let's get started. Prompt number one, good times, bad times. Name an author you've read a great book from and a bad book from. That, to me, will be Robert Jordan. Um, I've enjoyed majority of the Wheel of Time series, but um, of course everyone is well familiar with the big slog and the middle of this series. Um, particularly the ones that are called out are books 7 through 10. I could handle book 7, yes, 8, 9, eh, but then along came 10. And this is like the slog of the slogs. This is where the wheel of time got stuck in a big mud pit and could not get out. Um, holy buckets, this book was so horrifically bad. <laughs> and I hate to say that, but the great news is Robert Jordan redeemed himself. That 11th book was truly amazing and actually probably in my top three books of the wheel of time. Number two, babe, I'm going to leave you. Uh, this was my particularly favorite song from uh, this Led Zeppelin album, and it's too bad because the prompt is on a little bit of a negative side. Uh, it's name an author you've outgrown or have no desire to read anymore. For me, that will be Terry Goodkind. I just, I, I can separate the art from the artist, but uh, this, this series, uh, especially his uh, Sword of Truth series, just did not work for me. Um, and I read this back when it was kind of first released back in the 90s, early 2000s, and I, I just couldn't connect with anything that was going on here. Uh, there was a lot of cliche fantasy being done here, and you know, I, that's why we love fantasy, but it's done. It's, it's just done better in other pl uh, books. And um, yeah, it just, I, I will never probably finish a Terry Goodkind, even though I want to read a lot more 80s and 90s fiction, uh, fantasy fiction again, uh, Terry Goodkind will probably not be on that list. Number three, You Shook Me. Name a book that shocked you with something unexpected. I'm gonna go with A Storm of Swords by George R.R. Martin. Part number three of the Song of Ice and Fire. Uh, wow. <laughs> this book had so many like, what? And then later on, what? You know, <laughs> so uh, definitely some wow moments. And I don't think I've ever been so shocked by so many events occurring in one single book ever before. And uh, yeah, kudos to George R. R. Martin for uh, giving us these crazy moments. And I don't think I've, I've had another book impact me so much more in my life than uh, Storm of Swords. Number four, dazed and confused. Name or book or author you don't understand the hype for. Uh, for me, that's going to be The Three Body Problem by Shitsun Lu. I don't understand this book. I don't, um, maybe I'm just not smart enough or intelligent enough to get what's going on in this book. I just didn't really connect with the characters. There's a lot of jumping back and forth between past and present uh, of this book. Definitely feel like I'm in the minority here. I don't, um, I know a lot of people enjoyed this series and great, I'm happy for you. Um, just not me, I don't I don't understand it. I don't know if I'll continue it. I did complete the, the first book entirely, but um, yeah, um, let me know what you think of this because it just didn't work out for me. Uh, number five. Uh, your time is going to come. Name a book that's been on your TBR for more than a year. Uh, I had a, I have a lot, <laughs> but with this, I'm going to pull out of my uh, 
growing uh, self-published books that I have on my shelf. And I'm going to go with A Blood and Fire by Ryan Cahill. This is book one of the Bound and Broken series. Um, I'm hearing some wonderful things about this author, and I, I don't know why it keeps getting pushed uh, in my TBR for even uh, self-published books that I just recently pick up. Um, I will pick this up, definitely. I have majority of the hardbacks already. It, just a beautiful set of books. Um, looking forward to diving in. I just gotta find time when, but um, this one's been on my list for quite a while and I'm looking forward to it. Number six, Black Mountain Side. Name a book with an unusual or unconventional setting. Um, for me, this is a recent read, and that would be uh, Sen Lin Ascends. Uh, it's very, um, not very often you see a book that not only takes place in one town throughout the whole book, but in one building throughout the whole book. And that's what uh, Josiah uh, presents here. Uh, just all the different layers of the tower are just all very unique and um, actually kind of like their own worlds on each of their own. Uh, and uh, looking forward to continuing this series. Uh, number seven, Communication Breakdown. Name a book that you buddy read with somebody who, with whom you completely disagree with. Um, so uh, being as a new channel, I haven't really done a lot of buddy reads officially yet. Um, I do have one set for September, and that's uh, we're going to be reading The uh, Darkness That Comes Before by R. Scott Baker. And that's going to be with uh, Dan from the Black and Blue Collar Reader and maybe a few other booktubers. Um, so... Uh, I read this and it didn't click with me the first time. Um, Dan read it and I, he enjoys it. Uh, check out his uh, channel. Uh, he talks about R. Scott Baker quite a bit. Um, so this was going to be a very interesting uh, reread for both of us uh, in September to just see if maybe I get a bit better take on this book and maybe enjoy it a little more. Um, and yeah, definitely keeping an open eye because I do know there's some good content in this book from uh, my first experience, just wasn't the greatest. And yeah, we'll see how that changes in September. So number eight, I can't leave you, baby. Uh, name an auto by author. Um, so I'm gonna cheat and rebel and break the rules because that's what music's about. And I'm gonna name a couple here. Uh, so first up, I got Brian Lee Durfee. Uh, he is most notably known for the Five Warrior Angels trilogy. If he writes another book or another series, I will definitely be picking that up. Uh, next up, I have uh, Fonda Lee, who is most notably known for the uh, Greenbone Saga. Uh, again, great series, um, and I will definitely be picking her up anytime she writes something. As well as uh, John Gwen. I'm a little late to the John Gwen game, and I actually started my journey with him with the Bloodsworn. Uh, I guess it's going to be a trilogy. Um, of course, I read the. There's only the two current books out right now. I will definitely be picking up the Faith in the Fallen series, um, and I'm sure I will enjoy those well. Um, having a great time with uh, John Gwen. Um, and then finally, I want to give a little love again to the self-published industry, and I'm going to name out Rob J. Hayes. Uh, he has not led me astray with the Mortal Technique series. I know he's got another series out there too that I'm anticipating and reading. So yeah, thank you, Rob J. Hayes, for having a just incredible world in the Mortal Technique series. Definitely an autobi author. And then the last prompt, number nine, uh, how many more times? Name or book a series you keep coming back to even after you DNF'd it. Uh, that is <laughs> Brandon Sanderson's The Stormlight Archive, The Way of Kings. I DNF'd this book twice, um, almost in the same spot um, each time, like around 200 pages in. Uh, there are many parts to this book I really enjoy. Uh, I enjoy two, I've enjoyed two of the three point of view characters. Um, the third one is the one that just kind of drags me down. And I hear he, he things get better for his character. Um, and I'm hearing wonderful things about Words of Radiance and the follow-up uh, book. I just can't get past This Way of Kings. I do want to come back to this and um, explore a lot of other Brandon Sanderson's works. Um, so it, eventually I will come back to The Way of Kings again for a third time. I know there's something there I'm, gonna, I'm missing. And yeah, looking forward to it.
So music, like books, is for everybody. So if you want to participate in the Led Zeppelin book tag, I say go for it, each and every one of you. Um, I do want to pass on the baton to a couple of specific booktubers, though. Uh, Dan from the Black and Blue Collar Reader and Matt from Go Read Books. Guys, if you want to do this, I say go for it. Have some fun with it. Um, I want to thank uh, Jake um, from the Bookish Drummer again for uh, creating this uh tag. Um, I'll have the link to his original video in my description box, as well as thank you to uh, Pat from uh, Pat's Mythos. Again, thank you for the tag. Again, all four of these booktubers will be linked in the description, as well as the nine prompts I used. So if you're even if you're not a content creator, I'd like to know some of your answers to uh, some of these prompts. Otherwise, my name is Christopher Navo. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And I hope to see you in the next chapter. Take care. This, the, the, la 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 la. Uh, and what that was is, and what this is, is, <laughs> we, oh shit. <laughs> Fonda Lee, most knownly known for the, grown be, uh, the Green Bone Saga. Green Bone Saga. Sega. Oh, I'm still filming.